Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, draw a schematic. So go ahead and open Design Entry CIS. It'll open with this first window. Select the uh, first license and hit OK. Once it opens all the way, you're going to want to go ahead and click New Project. And you're going to want to give it a name. Oops, sorry. And then you're going to have to tell it uh, that it is a PC board wizard because we're going to make a PCB board eventually out of this and then give it a location. So um, the location should be wherever you're saving your uh, you, all those uh, files that you were set up initially. So mine are on my desktop. And you need to save it under the projects folder. Now under the projects folder you should give it, you should create a new directory and this will be the file that all that stores all the files that are created from the schematic and PCB board hit OK when, you're, when you have that set up in there and then go ahead and find it double click on it and hit OK and then double check that this is correct once that's OK go ahead and click OK we don't need to enable project simulation click next and you can add in the libraries that you want to use right now or you can do it later in, that, in another step and I'll show you the other step because it's much quicker so hit finish Cadence will open this, uh, this empty schematic screen and you can go ahead and start dropping in parts so the way to do that is place part and this should open up empty if this is the first time you've ever opened it and you're going to hit add library and this should open directly into the libraries folder otherwise if it doesn't it's normally located at this directory here so go ahead and click in here hit control A and hit open now this will drop all of the libraries that are preloaded in here for um, for cadence so I'm gonna make power supply here um, it's gonna be uh, we're gonna take a transformer input of 24 volts so I'm gonna need a connector with two inputs and you can click R to rotate things or you can right click mirror and mirror as well and we're going to mirror this one vertically as well that way pin one ends up on top and then we're going to rotate it again and mirror it vertically again and this will be my output I'm going to make a two two stage output uh, so I have a, a 12 volt and a, a 5 volt out So the next thing I'm going to need, uh, since this is coming from a 24 volt uh, AC line, I'm going to need a bridge rectifier. I'm going to type in bridge. I'm going to plug that in there. And then I'm going to need a LM7805. It, has a, it normally has a few you can choose from. Um, different, different setups to each one. Uh, just pick whichever one makes sense to you we're gonna pick this one and then I'm gonna also need a 7812 and then the last thing I'm gonna need are four bypass capacitors so we're gonna come down here and we need we don't need any polarization on it so we're gonna pick the cap NP we're gonna drop four of those in there and one more we're gonna need one more large polarized capacitor and we're gonna put that right here that'll be for the output of this bridge rectifier smooth it out a little bit so you can go ahead and move all these around best uh, get them in position of where, right before you're where you're gonna connect them try to make sure that things aren't overlapping like uh, labels and stuff like that we're gonna change some of these labels to their actual values so they'll change the length of them as well Okay, so one other thing that we're going to have to change here before we wire anything up, you can do it later after wiring, but I'm going to do it before, is that the pinout for this is not correct. Um, this is not the correct pin one for the part that I actually have. So we're going to edit part, and then we're going to double click on that, and this is AC1, that is actually pin two. This is DC, negative DC, that is pin 1. This is fine being 3, and this is fine being 4. So we'll hit 
close. And we're going to update the current version of it. All right. So now that we got this all set up, we're going to go ahead and start wiring things up. You can select this little place wire button, or you can just click W. And I need to take this to here, and then this to here. The positive end for the DC is going to come out to this capacitor, and then it's going to run up. You can click if you want to drop it there, or make a turn, and then here here and then here and then we're also going to come off this line and run right here move that down a little there there and there okay so that's all of our positive sides hooked up now we need to hook up the negative sides. So we're going to hit W again. And you can do this one of a few different ways. You can run this to each and every line if you want. But this is really our ground. So what I'm going to do is end it there. And I'm going to come up here and hit this place ground, or I could have clicked G. And I'm going to find the ground symbol I want to use. And this is the ground symbol I want to use. I'm going to want one there here, here, and here. And then I'm going to need to wire those up. Now once all those are wired up, this, there is one problem here, and that is that the pinout for this as well is not correct, as well as it's not showing the ground pin. Um, you can make it show the ground pin by editing part if you'd like. It's right here and it's set as a hidden because it has zero length. I'm just going to change the number and I'm going to show you the op the other way of doing it. It doesn't, and the pin's not visible as well, so you can check that if you want to see it. So we're going to change that to pin two, this to pin three. We'll close that. We're going to update the current on that, and we'll have to do that one more time for the LM eight uh, seventy eight twelve. Now, due to, the, due to the naming convention, I won't actually have to do this, but um, if you were to make your own part, um, you would have to do, you would most likely have to do this. You would want to select these two, these two by hitting control and then clicking on each individual one, or you could select them all, it really doesn't matter, but um, you have to select this assign power pins button, and then just make sure that uh, the power pin ground is set to ground and this power pin is set to ground as well which is this that ground there so now everything is set up this is wired correctly and we could make a PCB from it so what we need to do is give it footprints so you'll have to create your own footprints download them offline or um, use the ones that come with uh, come with cadence so to do that you're gonna wanna select every one of them and hit edit properties this is gonna come in like this uh, for the first time, you're going to want to right click and hit pivot and then come down here to PC, whoops, PCB footprint line here and each one of these you need to give them a PCB footprint. So we're going to say this one we're going to use uh, the, we're going to use uh, surface mount capacitors and um, it's going to be, well, I'm going to use the one from Cadence's directory. So that's a SMC uh, 1206 is what I'm going to use. SMC 1206. SMC is surface mount uh, capacitor, and then 1206 is the size for it. Whoops. SMC 1206. And then this one is the polarized one, and I've already I've made a custom custom pad for that. So we're gonna shrink this a little bit. Make this uh, dual screen here. You can close out of the place parts if it's in the way. And we're going to go into my symbols folders here. Uh, I would recommend putting this in order here and look for the drawing the drawing name. So this is radial can SMD 10 millimeter radius. Copy that. Drop that in there. Uh, the bridge rectifier. 
I have right here. You can tell it to not show this box if that is annoying you. And then we've got connector, two connectors. We're going to head and pick the uh, five millimeter one here. And then for the 7805 and 7812, they're the same package size, and that is a TO220. So we'll copy that, paste, and paste. Then you can go ahead and save that, and right click close that. All right, now that we have all the footprints set, we want to verify all those footprints look correctly. Um, Caden says this wonderful 3D uh, footprint viewer thing that I'm going to show you here in a second. So make sure you follow the initialization video, otherwise this will not work. But you're going to right click on each part and hit show footprint. If there's any issue with the footprint or there was an issue in how you save that, uh, the initialization, it's going to tell you down here that it can't find it or some other form of that error. So you can uh, left click over here and uh, rotate the part and look at it, make sure this, these are through holes. We can see that there's a through hole there and there's a pad on top and a pad on bottom. You'll want to do this with every single part. Uh, show footprint. So that's DC1, AC, AC, and DC. So that will work for that part. This is my surface mount radial can cap. Could not retrieve, see here is an error, could not retrieve PCB footprint property, unable to show a footprint in the viewer. So that means there's an issue with uh, where it's looking uh, looking for it or the, I gave it the wrong, uh, uh, the wrong name here for the PCB footprint. We can see it didn't save there, so let's go ahead and click on just those. And that was it. I just missed one. And now it shows it. You'll want to do, like I said this before, you'll want to do this for every single part and verify that they're all there. All right, so all my footprints are there. They all look right. Uh, the next thing is, is you're going to want to kind of change some stuff in here. So instead of saying cap pole, let's say this is a 220 UF cap. All I did was double click on that, and you can hit OK. And now that has a value associated with it. Same thing here. Uh, if I remember correctly from the data sheet, they want a 0 0.33 UF on the input and a one UF on the output. I could be incorrect there, but it really doesn't matter. It's just this, it's just for labeling purposes. But um, if you were doing this realistically, you do want to make sure these values are correct. If you had any resistors in this, you'd also want to place their wattage value. And you could change these. I wouldn't change the J1 or the C5 or D1s, but you can change the connector to input, AC input. Change this one to five volts output. And this one to 12 volt output. So that's all set up and we're good to go. We could actually make us uh, make a PCB now because it has all the information it needs. Now I would recommend editing this title block, putting in the, your team name, your project name, um, the revision, and keep up with these revision codes. That way um, everything is uh, documented properly. So this is how you draw a schematic. This is the initial setup, and in another separate video, I'll show you how to actually make a PCB, uh, export the netlist, and make a PCB board from this.